I'm going to talk about Elizabeth Cady Stanton. But to give you some context before her speech, I am going to share with you the tale of Seneca Falls. I'm going to tell you a tale of a complaint. A complaint can be like a pearl. Do you know how pearls are formed? An irritation invades a clamshell. And in an effort to get rid of that irritation, the clam extrudes a substance that surrounds the irritation. Layer by layer, over time, a pearl is formed. And this is about the formation of a precious pearl, the right to vote for women. She was 33 years old, and she was married to an abolitionist agent, and she was frustrated at her role as housewife and mother. She had three small boys, and she complained to her friends, not only about her personal situation, but women's status in society and their lack of legal rights. So young Elizabeth decided she would change that, and she was, she was about eight years old, she took a pair of scissors and she was about to cut those laws out of her father's statute book. <laughs> and her father told her that that was not going to solve the problem. I should feel exceedingly diffident to appear before you today, having never before spoken in public. Were I not nerved by a sense of right and duty. Did I not feel that the time had fully come to lay the question of women's law wrongs before the public? Did I not believe that woman herself must do this work? For woman alone can know the height, the depth, the length, and the breadth of her own degradation. We now demand our right to vote according to the declaration of the government under which, which we live. We have no objection to discuss the question of equality, for we feel the weight of argument lies wholly with us. But we wish the question of equality kept distinct from the question of rights, for the proof of the one does not indicate the truth of the other. All white men in this country have the same right, however they may differ in mind, body, or estate. 